This is LBC Tonight with Andrew Marr. On ne parle pas français. Ich kann kein Deutsch sprechen. And so on. A new report says growing numbers of British school children are opting out of foreign languages at GCSE because they don't think it will help their careers. 20 years ago, around 330,000 pupils took French GCSE. This summer, it was just 131,000. The number of children studying German dropped from 125,000 to 34,000, although Spanish, interestingly, is becoming more popular, which suggests this isn't necessarily post-Brexit kids thumbing their noses at the Continentals. But is their choice in any way rational or sensible? It's feeding through to universities, some of whose modern language departments are apparently struggling to keep going. Richard Simcott is a British polyglot who can speak 16 languages and claims to have studied more than 50 of them. He also runs the annual Polyglot Conference. Very good to see you there, Richard. Can I, first of all, I can't resist this, start by asking you which languages you speak, apart from English, I hope. <laughs> well, yes, I can speak a little bit of English. Nice to be with you. Thank you for having me. I have been studying languages pretty much since I was five years old, started with the typical French and then had Spanish at school. And my degree is in French, Spanish, Italian and Portuguese. And then I went on to study a diploma in Czech studies at Charles University in Prague and then lived in a number of EU countries whilst we still had the right to do that and studied in them too. So I've been mm. fortunate to live in Germany, the Netherlands and many, many more. So you've got lots and lots of language. Is it is it true, because I don't have any personal experience of this, that once you've got a couple of languages under your belt, the rest come more easily? There is some truth in that because you start to see the connections between languages. It also helps you with your English. Because obviously, as you know, English is not a language that is completely isolated from other languages in the world. Mm. As soon as you start studying French or German at school, you start immediately seeing words that are the same, things that we have in common, things like hand, hand in German, elbow, Ellenbogen. And then in French, a lot of our food words are from French. So we even use the word escargot to say yeah. we eat snails. So I, I, I guess the essence of this report is that school children have decided that learning a language isn't going to be very important for them. And I guess it must be something to do with the overwhelming use of English on social media and the Internet that they're, they're interacting with. Because they see all these TikTokers and so forth all speaking English thing. Well, there's no reason to speak anything else. Why are they wrong? I think... They're actually not completely wrong. I do understand the logic behind it. So even though I'm a proponent for learning another language, I think that the, we have to turn things on the head a little bit and say, okay, well, what else do they give? Yes, people are learning English around the world in increasing numbers as well. And when we go on holiday, we do tend to have the option of using English. But actually learning another language, particularly languages that are close to home, like Spanish, like French, like German, actually help us to understand our own origins way better. We can understand better our own literature. We can understand how to express ourselves and create thoughts in our heads to be able to say what we think and feel in another way. That in itself helps our neuroplasticity. And so I think that we can't negate the fact that people can go away and use English, but it's way more fun to engage with people in their own language because you get to experience so much more of the culture. Language is the vehicle for the culture that you're going to explore. And I'm very glad you used the word neuroplasticity because as a stroke survivor, it's one I'm very familiar with. Basically, this means that you think learning languages makes you cleverer. <laughs> Well, it definitely makes you more neurally dexterous, I would say. So you're able to think <laughs> of things in different ways. You'll also find different things intriguing, funny, amusing. And also, the world is more colourful. So if you imagine watching black and white TV, you're speaking just English. When you want to turn the colour on, that's when you start adding languages to it. The more languages you add, the more ability to see the different colours, the different ranges and the beauty of our world. Now, an awful lot of schools up and down the country are thinking at least about uh, teaching Chinese, Chinese Mandarin, because of the power of China. I don't know if you speak any Mandarin, but my instinct has been that those Far Eastern languages are just much, much harder for British people to learn than European ones. 
I mean, clearly it's further away from the French and German, whereas, you know, in English, as I said, we've got these words that we can immediately identify as being um, the same as or very similar to the French or German counterparts. Now, when you talk about a language like Chinese, clearly in terms of distance and in terms of linguistic familiar context, it, it's just a very different game. And yes, it takes a bit longer, but it's also a good thing to enjoy and to explore as well. Richard, you are an official polyglot, so I have to ask you this. Is there a language you have started to study and then thought, do you know what, this is just too hard, I'm not <laughs> going to get there and given up? Go on, admit it. I will, I'll admit it. So I studied uh, Georgian at university in Malmö in Sweden online when we were able to do that as Brits within the European Union. And I did a year of it, and I have to say... I find it extremely difficult to get my head around the grammar. Uh, but it was a beautiful okay. experience nonetheless. Georgian grammar, there's something we'll all avoid. Finnish itself, I'm told, is also pretty fiendishly difficult for, for British people to learn. But nonetheless, you think this is something that children should be thinking again about, uh, j not just for their careers, but for their entire lives. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, for talking to us. Entirely in English, I'd like to point out.